Hello everybody, Andrew Cuneo here. I'm back with a chromatic cube draft. So what do we got? We have one of my most hated cards, the Cold Steel Heart. I will not be picking that one. Uh, so far in this cube, I've, the decks I'd like the best are blue-black decks, but I don't know that I'm going to first pick Hidetsugu and Kairi. Because it's, it's honestly not even that good in blue-black. I mean, it, it's good, but it's not incredible. There's Valky, which I think is pretty good. There's also Prosper, which is pretty good as well in red-black. I think white is the worst color in this cube. I'm going to start with the Valky. I think Price of Fame is a really good removal spell in this cube. Like, definitely two mana kill a creature. Yeah, I, I think you would always play, and most of the creatures in this cube are legendary, and then you also get the Surveil. Like, sometimes you have to pay four mana, but you pay two mana a lot of the time, so... I think this is probably the best one-for-one -one removal spell in the cube. Got Sedgemore Witch, which is like nothing special. I'll probably just pick Soul Transfer. Unlike in some cubes where you don't really want to bother with removal because some people just aren't even going to really be trying to kill you with creatures. In this cube, basically every deck wins through creatures or planeswalkers, so. Having one for one removal is pretty good. Also, in general, the creatures cost a lot more than three mana. I probably won't be able to get to the point where I have a enchantment and an artifact in play, but maybe. I mean, it's a possibility. Now, what do we got? Ooh, another one of what I think is one of the better removal spells, so I'm just drafting all removal spells. Like, this, I think, is a great removal spell. This spell, I think, is pretty bad in this cube because most of the creatures are big, so it's pretty hard for this to kill what you want it to kill. Like, I don't, I'm not saying you should never play with this if you're red-blue, but it, I don't think this is a high pick at all. Whereas, I think Shieldred's Edict is very good. There's also a Watery Grave, which is quite good. All right, now what we've got Mind Stone. Always excellent. Halo Forager, I don't think is generally all that good, but I do have a really good start for it. Having said all that, though, I think I want to just take Rankle. Rankle's really, I think, pretty above rate in this cube, just because it's it's hard to get things that cost, you know, four mana and under. Just so much of this cube is things that cost five or more. Having a really high impact card that is less than five mana is a pretty big deal. Relic of Legends is also pretty good. I don't know that I would really be excited to take any of the other cards. I guess Storm Carved Coast can be good, depending on your deck. Hmm. This pack does not have a ton that interests me. It could be some kind of white-black deck. That's not my first choice. Certainly not going to take Oath of Kaya. I think this is like the very much the wrong kind of removal spell for this cube. I guess I could just take Sarkin. The Sarkin's actually pretty good. I think it's between Sarkin and Priest of Fell Rites, and I think I'm just going to take Sarkin. Let the dragons roar, shake your soul. I kind of want to be. I want to have some amount of red mana so I can cast Tybalt. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to be like actually red black, but. Being able to cast Tibble would be nice. So white appears to be open. I think it's not going to be Invasion of Tolvada. Just because I think these other white cards are stronger. Don't really love this Alicia who smiles at death. I do like Sunni's intervention quite a lot. 
I also liked White Sun's Twilight a lot, but you really need to be able to spend seven mana on this. I guess I'll take Sune's Intervention. I don't know if I'm really going to play White yet. So we've got... Not a whole lot really going on. I could take the Dragon's Horde. I do already have the Sarkin. I don't think I really would be very excited to play with Eradicator Valkyrie. Cast outs maybe. Young Pyromancer. It's good because it's two mana and like it's hard to get cheap cards in this cube, but it's also pretty low impact. All right, the Hidetsugu and Kairi wield. That's kind of weird. We've got Heart of Kirin, which can be a little bit hard to crew. I guess I'm just going to take Temple of Silence. I'm in some sort of Mardu colors. It'll be fine. More support for being Mardu. cards are okay. This is just too hard to cast. Like maybe if, if I was a heavy white deck, it would be fine, but I'm going to be a heavy black deck. I guess I'll take Temple of Triumph. This is pretty weird. I never get this card because I don't pick it that highly, but it is pretty good, and why it's still in the pack at this point, I don't understand, because basically this card would go on anyone's deck. So I will take it. Uh, would I ever put this card in my deck? It's triple white. Probably not. I'll just take Watery Grave and maybe I need blue mana for some reason. To cast my Halo Forager. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like I'm going to be white and not blue. Angel of Intervention's pretty... Ooh, Priest of Fell right soon. Yeah. It'll, Angel of Intervention's pretty nice with Rankle, having the 1-1s one to be able to sack. I do like Solemn Simulacrum. Loran is okay. I like Henrika a lot as a card, but I don't know that have enough fodder to really sack yet. I'm not really excited about any of this stuff, honestly. I think I'll just take Solemn Simulacrum and embrace my three color life. Attracts is obviously really good if you can cast it, but being able to play, I think Playing four mana in this cube is actually playing four colors in this cube is actually kind of hard. And I already had like a tiny desire to be red. I feel like this Chandra Hope's Beacon card should be really good, but I've never seen it do anything good. I don't think I'm going to pick it here. Companioning Lutri is obviously always an option. I don't know how much red I'm going to be, and I don't think I'm going to be blue at all. I kind of want to just take Realm Cloaked Giant to have a sweeper. This card always confuses me, which that's not a great aspect for a card to have. I just, it never winds up working out the way I expect. I think I'm just going to take Swarm Saboteur. I really like having it as a cheap card in this cube. And I've got Rankle to sack the Virus Beetles too, and I've got Angel of Intervention to make the Virus Beetles potentially a little better. All good things. Hmm. I 
This card is pretty good if it lives. And do I want a double red card? Not all that much. There's also set all the score, but four mana is four mana sorcery speed, like it's so much worse than soul transfer. I think I'm just gonna take Cathar Commando. Continue to embrace our cheap spell life. Alright, here's there's some interesting choice picks here. So I do sort of like Finale of Eternity. Magda is really good, although I'm maybe not enough red. I think I'm just going to take Forsaken Crossroads. Just take a land. I'm pretty good on my spells. Like, in terms of having enough spells I'm willing to play. I think I'm going to want to play 17 lands on my deck. I think in this cube, you definitely want to play 18 lands a lot of the time. But my curve isn't that high. And I'm going to play Ornithopter, Paradise, and Dragon Sword probably. And, like, I've done a really good job getting cheap spells. Lantern of Revealing is actually a perfectly reasonable card in this cube. This is the buffed version of it. I think that the original version costs more to activate. I don't know. I'm just going to take a land, though. Uh, more lands for me. Do I want Fabled Passage or Godless Shrine? Probably Godless Shrine. So we have the Eldest Reborn, which is okay. Soul Servitude, which is also okay. Or this... I might actually take Cavalier of Night. I have a decent amount of cheap stuff to sack, so I, I get the removal trigger. And I'm probably going to have... Oh no, I took Tristani Discordant. Oh well. Misclicks were made. I'll take Henrique Domnathy. Which works. All, it does a lot of the same things as the Cavalier of Night. That's my story and I'm sticking with it. Massacre Worm. I'll probably play Massacre Worm. Missing that pick on the Cavalier of Night isn't going to hurt me at all. I've got, I'm going to wind up with plenty of playables, more than a, I really need. Like, Ang Anguished on Making is another pretty good removal spell, but I'm going to take a Blood Crypt over it, because I do think I want to play Sarkin, and like I said, I definitely want some red mana to go with Tybalt. Uh... Man, nobody wants Plarg in the Sari. I'm kind of surprised I haven't gotten any dragons to go with my Dragon Sword. Collective effort is sometimes really good. I'm playing best of three, so I might sideboard it in. Uh... I don't understand why this card is in the cube. It like has all these words on it, but it's just terrible. I don't think this Nahiri really stands up to modern magic cards either. There was a time when people used to play this in like modern. Just straight up they would put it in their modern deck. Nobody's seen it doing that in 2023. So there's a Lurus, which obviously I can't companion. But I do actually have like a decent number of things I could get back with it. There's also Concealed Courtyard. I think I'll take Loris. Play in my deck. There's a Null Priest of Oblivion if I want to get more things to Loris back. I think I'm just going to take the land though. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to play 10 basics at this point, meaning I want four more spells. We have Restoration of Iganjo or Blood Chief's Thirst. 
I'll just go with Blood Chief's Thirst. I might not need to play the Dragon's Horde. At the time when I picked it, I figured I would get... I thought I would be more red-black and get a few more dragons. But I did not. That did not happen. I do not like Drown and Icker very much as a removal spell in this cube. It's sorcery speed, which is a big knock, and it doesn't kill big creatures, which is also a big problem. And I haven't found that proliferating actually does much in most of my decks. I'm just taking another land here. I do very much enjoy having Gonti in my deck. I think I'm going to take Gonti. I think I'm not going to play this Sarkin. Because I don't think I want to construct my deck so that I'm going to be getting access to double red mana. So casting the Sheevan Dragons is probably not really going to happen. This way, I don't think I'm even going to play a mountain to get with my uh, Solemn Simulacrum. Man. I, I actually like Cemetery Desecrator a lot. I think it's pretty good. I think I'm just going to take Kaya, though. It's also Isolated Chapel. When you can walk through walls, anything looks easy. Don't really love Skrill's Hive. I think it's pretty hard to make the one ones do anything. I don't think I'm going to have enough red mana that I really want to rip apart. I think I'll just take Feed the Swarm and I'll play with it. So I just have, I have white, black, kill stuff. That is my deck. Monastery Mentor, that's probably pretty good for me. Definitely taking Sealed Courtyard. I might not even need to play all these black or all these red temples. Now that I'm really just the only way I'm going to be spending red mana is with Valky or with Tipple. Skyclave Apparition would be okay. I, I think normally I would take it over Null Priest of Oblivion, but I'm going to take Null Priest here because I have Luris. I want another thing I can get back with the Luris. This card is functionally evolving wilds in almost all decks, because in this cube you generally don't have a dragon with it. But if you would play an evolving wilds, it's perfectly fine. I'm not going to play an evolving wilds in my deck, but if you're the kind of person who's looking for an evolving wilds, they've got you covered. Is poor Spelldrain Assassin. I remember when they made this card in Alchemy, reading it, thinking, oh man, Grixis is great, and a new Grixis vampire, this is going to be great, and then you read it and you're like, this is just, it doesn't do anything at all. Whoa, Cemetery Desecrator Wheel, I'm definitely going to play that one. So I think I'm still fine with 17 lands. Even though I did cut the, the dragon sword. I think I'm going to cut one of the red temples. Just to have fewer tap lands. This will give me 
three land sources for Tybalt. Plus for taking crossroads. Although I'm going to have to be careful with that because I do have like a triple black and a double white cards in my deck. So I'm not going to just be setting that to red all the time. I also have the Ornithopter in Paradise, which will give me access to red mana. I'm not going to play a mountain to get with Salmus and Milacrum. I don't need to warp. I, like, I don't want to draw a mountain in a deck that has this heavy of a colored requirements. I want to cast, I want to cut one card. I think it could just be Feed the Swarm. All right, white, black, lots of removal. This deck's probably fine. Usually in this cube, you want to have... There's there's kind of two ways to get to really good decks. One is the green ramp decks. And those decks are good, but if you have removal to kill the ramping creatures, they actually aren't that scary. And the other thing is like blue decks that have some of the, the more expensive counter spells with that give you advantages like Sublime Epiphany or Kindred Denial, Dismiss, stuff like that. And against those decks, there's not a lot of ways to attack people's hands. Like I didn't get the Elite Spellbinder and I didn't see Collective Brutality. But the other way you can beat those decks is if you just have cheap spells to go under their counters and I actually have pretty good cheap spells. So I think I'll be fine in those kind of matchups, but let's find out. Did my best to get the tapped red lands out. Well, I guess I didn't do my best because I did play the Temple of Malice, but I'm glad that I didn't draw the white red temple as well this game. Let's say that. Do I want a Halpack Piper? I guess. Just because I don't think I'm going to reasonably be able to cast the Great Henge anytime soon. This isn't one of the ones that trans when it transforms you lose control of it, right? I don't think so. I'm not a fan of this guard guardian idol. It's just too bad. Do I want to put my Halpack Piper into play or just cast the Angel of Invention? And give them a beating, they won't soon forget. I think I'm just going to give them a beating, they won't soon forget. Make my Ornithopter a 1 3. I have the price of fame to kill a potential blocker. So this this thing effectively put what eight power into play. All right, they got access to a ton of mana. Do they have anything to do with it? I might want a price of fame the cannon in my upkeep. I think I'll price the fame of the Golos in my upkeep. Can't reasonably let that live. Oh. 
Can't cast the Rankle this turn, but I can cast it next turn. And we're going to play the Priest of Fell Rights this turn rather than attacking for one. Say if they use the Pelucranos now. If they use the Pelucranos now. I guess I can use it twice, actually. That's a pretty effective draw for them. I hope they're afraid to let me untap. They weren't afraid. They can do this twice, right? Because of the extra mana from Kinnon. So they're going to fight the Angel of Intervention. Not the Angel of Invention. And they can fight the Rankle. But if they do all that... The Gaunti... They'll... They can have the Gonti just block, or they can block the Pelucranos with the Gonti. Other way around. The way Pelucranos works, Death Touch is not effective against it. But they're going to have to fight. Time to spin with not bad. I was going to get back to the rank on, but I don't think they could live through my next attack. So we have a green ramp deck. The only real question is, is there anything that I want to... Like, I could put Feed the Swarm or Collective Effort in my deck. Probably not Collective Effort, just because... I, th I think you really want cheaper mobile spells to kill the ramp creatures in matchups like this. I think I already have enough of that stuff that I'm not going to add more of it, though. Maybe over Sunny's Intervention. I don't think I saw any artifacts or enchantments. I guess I saw... That's not true. I saw Guardian, Idol, and Golos. Yeah, I'll play Feed the Swarm, at least on the draw. I also saw the Great Henge, but I'm still... I think I'm happier to have the cheaper card against the green deck. Usually the green deck's in this cube. It's just... They try to, like, ramp and get ahead and kill you quick. They're not actually very good at grinding out long games. In general, it's been my experience. Yes, I'm going to take this and I'm going to play a turn four Massacre Worm. That's how this card works, right? I 
this is this is instant speed. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have turned it into Sombra Wall so you just played the Monastery Mentor on my turn. That would have been way more sensible. Surprise, it's Nero. It's Nero that's actually going to come back pretty soon because I'm about to kill all their creatures. Should I just play a Rump Cloak Giant on my next turn? I might. I can't bring Megaro this turn, right? They need one more thing to die or two more. Is this one? Yeah, it's five. Man, if you did not play through the, the period when this card was legal in formats on Arena, it was miserable. This card... It's from a time period when you have to really wonder what they were thinking about when they were designing cards. Ooh. Definitely missed. Uh, I missed four damage at this point because I messed up and didn't play Monster Mentor on turn three. Probably not gonna matter, but I could. As far as ahead as I am, I could certainly be even further. Sack the Somberwald Sage to the Henrika. They get a Somberwald Sage back. And then I'm probably just gonna null priest back the Valky. Sand isn't quite bad enough to mulligan, but it is pretty bad. Drawing that did not improve it. Come on, play a legendary card. Legendary creature. Grim Flare, not legendary. True story.
I want to just play Valky, I guess. Something I take. It's a tox roll. That's not. I'm not going to be turning Valkyrie into tox roll anytime soon. There's a bunch of planeswalkers. That's pretty annoying. Okay, but probably not good enough. Cemetery Desecrator. This isn't going great. The same anti-green sideboarding plan. Most of the plans just have a better hand. This is a better hand. Four lands instead of two. Castable spells. Scrying action. I don't think it works. More lands. Ooh, sweeper. Their deck did have a lot of planeswalkers in it. Liliana, three. They have three mana Liliana. Growth Spiral. Nice. Oh, yeah, I thought that this was a swamp. It's a forest. Cultivator's Caravan. Shigeki. I think I'm just at this point probably playing to set up a uh, Realm Cloak Giant. Sweeping the board. Are any of my creatures giants? Is the Ornithopter of Paradise a giant? No. Classic non giant. Geki getting back stuff is actually going to be kind of annoying. I'm wishing I had killed it with the Edict at this point. Oh, 
not sure that they actually should have played that. Ooh, that's a good draw. Saw target artifact or creature. I'm not gonna be doing that. So next turn I can play this, proliferate, minus this. I can't do that. There were some problems with that plan. Lucranos again. My opponents just have the same cards. So I'm going to play Vraskin minus. It's just going to wind up coming back. I'm just going to cast the Cathar Commando. So there's no reason to give them access to the man off the caravan. Doing that no matter what, because just a 5 5 blocker is going to be hard to get through. Okay. Put a stop to that token. I suppose they're doing this because they want to be able to recast it next turn. I'm certainly happy they spent six mana on their turn doing all that. And I don't appreciate it when people touch my things. So I can minus on the Vraska. I can minus the Vraska on the Pelucranos. Play the Gaunti. Probably just kill the Liliana with Rankle, but we'll see what we get off the Gaunti first. hand is actually probably good.
If they didn't make us discard, I'm just gonna make us both discard. I'll let them get the edict. It was Jenga taxes. Not bad. I guess at this point, I, I wish I had just had Rankle hit Liliana, but if it had been a sweeper, I think it would have been better to just go after their hand. They didn't... No, no, they, they gotta use Liliana this turn, right? Sacrifices must be made. I could have proliferated under their treasure just to help them out a tiny bit. It would have been kind of me. That didn't go very well for me. Didn't go very well at all. Oh, they want their own. This has really kind of gone bad. Okay. Yeah, I can't. Can't kill anything with that right now. Man, that sublime epiphany, it was rough. I think we're going to have a game where Sune's intervention is going to be good. 
So far it's all been matchups where it's going to be pretty bad. My monastery mentor is about to die. It's been defeated. This is such a disappointing card. It seems like it should be good, but it, I don't think it, there's been any format at any point where it was actually good. Maybe in this limited, in like its original limited format, it was good. It's not a very good card in this cube. It costs way too much mana for what it does. Graveyards don't really matter that much in this cube in general. My angel of intervention about angel of invention about to die too. At some point, you got to start going easy on one, my opponent. This is a really bad spot to block in because if they have an instant speed removal spell, like if I double block with the servos, they have an instant speed removal spell. They kill this, they eat it, and then they eat both servos. I could, guess I could block with one servo, but then they just kill it, and they don't even need to spend mana on eating. And I'm about to be able to kill it with Sune's Intervention, which I'm almost guaranteed to cast next turn. Hmm. I guess that maybe changes things a little. Not really, though. I think it's still probably better to kill the Lion Sash than the 3-3 Golem. See if they go crazy. Maybe they'll they'll play some sort of enchantment to exile the Angel of Invention before they attack. Well, they do play an enchantment, which I am gonna blow up, but it's not that big of a deal that I'm getting to blow it up. Because they spent their mana before attacking, I can double block safely on this for striking Gollum with the two knight tokens. It's like the knights... Yeah, whatever, let's do it all. Target an artifact. Target an enchantment. Target a player. This is good value. there's anything they can have in this cube for one white mana that really gets me here. There's Ephemerate, but it doesn't do anything in this combat. Oh, I was wrong. March of Elder Deadly Light. Okay. This is the one that's legal and standard. There's also a, a Modern Horizons one. I guess that's Sarah something. I think this one is better than the Modern Horizons one. But I don't think either of them are particularly strong.
probably gonna have to actually edict planeswalker. I don't have a way to get through their vicious 3-4 flying giant killer. I guess I did get a bunch of free cards off of that showdown of the Scalds. Which I got a bunch of free stuff off of the... Sune's intervention, although I did kind of spew off some of it. I want to make each player sack. Draw a card. I think let's just draw a card. Nice if I had had that uh, Blood Chief's Thirst as my draw step. So I could have killed the Giant Killer and then just killed the Archangel Elspeth. Does that guy work with Planeswalkers? That guy's actually a weird problem. If I transform this, flying death touch or lifelink. What happens if I transform and just attack with everything? Seems like it goes pretty well for me. They have some decent blocks, but they're not insane. Pretty sure they can live, but I don't think they can keep anything... They can't keep much of their board behind the beyond the Quintorius and the 3-3 three, three Golem. And I'm still going to have the Henrika. Do they live if they blocked? Like, I'm not sure they live. Let's find out. Signs point to they didn't live. They might not have been able to live even if they'd... Well, I guess they could have always blocked the Henrika. Just to chump it. Can't board out Sune's intervention now. I got to do all five modes that last game. Seems like a good hand against a white-red aggro deck. I need a fourth land before I can cast it, but I also need a fifth land, and by keeping that, that will get me my fifth land. This looks like a job for a commando. Maybe not, if they play a legend, and I can price of fame. 
I'll do that instead. I tried so hard to make it good when it was legal and standard. I think I actually played it in my main deck at its standard Pro Tour. It was never actually good though. Please don't let you can get something. Oh, that was Norn. That's definitely something. This card's actually quite strong. It just was never good in standard because the like a, a white black creature deck was never a real thing when it was legal. Kinda sad that it's about to die to Minskin Boo. Minskin Boo is substantially better than Kaya. For people who don't know, the paper version of Minskin Boo is only four mana. And it's just a legacy staple. Why they thought it was a good idea. To print it at four mana, I don't really understand because this card even sometimes gets played in historic. It is quite strong. So I'm gonna have to fight through the Elish Norn at this point, probably. Which I got plenty of ways to kill it, but it is gonna wipe my board when it gets cast, which is what makes the card so strong. I suppose if I draw a land and they, I could just play 7-7 seven, seven Vigilance guy. I wonder if they boarded into a more controlling deck after game one. Gonna play seven seven. To the earth with me. Rather than wait for them to play the Elishnorn and then Wrath and then play it. Obviously, I wouldn't play this way except I've got two removal spells in my hand. Which, if they play an Elishnorn, I'm gonna want to price a fame in my upkeep. Let's see if I can. Find, I don't know, Rankle. Oh no. That's a pretty nice draw. I didn't really, they, they actually buffed this card. I think it used to have Ninjutsu 2, and it, it got tweaked to be Ninjutsu 1 now, which I don't think really makes it all that much better. Is it, well, it's only going to see play an alchemy, so has anyone ever actually put it in a constructed deck? The world may never know. Keep trying to beat them to death before the Zealous Norn comes out. Where am I finding the Swarm Saboteur? I'm not going to let that resolve. 
you guys enjoyed that I, I think this cube is really good it's quite a lot of fun it's pretty well balanced i've been enjoying it so i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time